विद्महे सत्य देवाय धीमहि तन्नसर्व प्रचोदयात् ओम साईश्वराय विद्महे सत्य देवाय धीमहि तन्नसर्व प्रचोदयात् ओम साईश्वराय विद्महे सत्य देवाय धीमहि तन्नसर्व प्रचोदयात् जय 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 शंभो महेश गिरीशा शिव शिव शंभो महेश गिरीशा शिव शंभो महेश गिरीशा हर हर साई महादेवा Shut 
शंकर सदा शिवा शंकर शंकर सदा शिवा शंकर शंकर सदा शिवा शंकर शंकर सदा शिवा सदा शिवा हे साम शिवा शंकर सदा शिवा शंकर सदा शिवा अंबा सहिता सांब शिवा सहिता सांब शिवा सांब शिवा हे सदा शिवा सांब शिवा हे सदा शिवा सांब शिवा हे सदा शिवा नम शिवाय हरि ओम तत् सत् नम शिवाय शिवा 
शिव शिवाय नम शिवाय
शंभो हे नटरा हाल लोचना पाही मुरारी लोचना पाही मुरारी हाला हल धर हे त्रिपुरारी हल धर हे is a is my own experience of how bhagwan put the samskara into me a particular one i've shared this often but i would like to because i was reminded after i heard the allahu akbar bhajan it was in my second year post graduation in my mba that bhagwan gave me a lot of chances swami used to look at me and say next bhajan you sing and when swami starts to give some importance obviously you know our it is like a pumping session where our head keeps growing 
bigger and bigger and our heart keeps shrinking and we think you know i am the next bhajan i am the next best bhajan singer you know i am swami's boy etc etc and swami wants to prick that and so it so happened that this experience happened with me it was uh, one of those days in bhajan hall and if you notice we have a beautiful footrest of bhagwan and the indication for arati will be when swami pushes the footrest in, inside and arati will be taken and that could happen any time typically we used to have about 7 to 8 bhajans between 5 and 5:30 about 5:25 swami will take arati one day i was singing the seventh bhajan i was going to sing the seventh bhajan and after the sixth bhajan swami took arati the next day i was singing the sixth bhajan and after the fifth bhajan swami took arati the following day i was singing the fifth bhajan and after the fourth bhajan swami took arati now when such a thing happens we have one of our coordinators our senior sirs in our bhajan group he has got long tentacles which have got very you know unrestricted coverage with bhagwan he is able to catch all these signals and obviously i knew that he is going to say something to me i try to avoid myself i did not want to make eye contact with him our bhajan group in charge i simply try to whisk away i knew that there was something wrong and even that sir also he looked at me and i looked at him and we just shared a few uh, looks and i just ran away from bhajan hall couple of days later <clears throat> i was slotted to sing the first bhajan and now i wondered swami how are you going to miss my bhajan today you have been missing my bhajan for the past four occasions i forgive you for that but today you just cannot miss my bhajan if you say bhajan i have to be singing i am the first singer ganesh bhajan i have to start or so i thought that day the bhajans were not inside bhajan hall they were outside bhajan hall so all of us were seated outside and bhagwan came and uh, he asked out of all the days that day for not one not two not three but six speakers to speak in front of swami in front of him six speakers spoke before the bhajans and so all of us and i was particularly very curious i kept looking at the clock and i was thinking probably today there will not be any bhajan and if there is no bhajan there is no problem because it's not my fault six speakers spoke and probably the last speaker will get the brunt because after his speech swami has taken arati so i was seated over there and i was keenly looking at the clock and after six speakers it was about one and a half hours that bhagwan had spent outside in kulvant hall dear brothers and sisters the most amazing miracle happened bhajans happened but guess what happened during bhajans even as the six sixth speech got over swami asked for bhajans and then looked at the set of primary school students who had come and said today you will sing bhajans <laughs> oh my god the primary school children led the bhajans that day swami sat for half an hour listening to their bhajans of course it was a moment for them to cherish in fact and it was a moment for me to introspect swami had given me the slip thinking i thought i am going to be the first singer of the day swami had a way to even bypass that obviously after that sir walked up to me and said brother take rest <laughs> take stock of the position of your position what is happening why is swami doing this and so for the next 15 days i used to sit at the back of the bhajan group and i used to follow bhajans and every day i used to cry swami what have i done what should i do swami please forgive me and these were the kind of prayers inside in fact to drive home the point so deep into me one day swami even asked the vedam people to chant sing bhajans he did not allow i am sure some of the brothers over here will be remembering that swami made the vedam people to sing bhajans they were atrociously beautiful bhajans 
atrocious for so called music connoisseurs but beautiful for bhagwan swami simply enjoyed the bhajans that day to drive home the point deep within he was doing this i felt at that moment several people around kulvant hall were getting their chances only to drive home the point into my mind and it was about 20 days since this event happened and one day sir looked at me and said okay why don't you sing today it was my so called day of redemption i was singing the third bhajan swami came out he was sitting in kulvant hall that day swami called four speakers to speak the whole session went on for about an hour and hour 15 minutes and i kept looking at the watch and I, at the end of the fourth speaker swami said rendu bhajan padandi i said swami what is your problem all you need to do is lift up this one more finger i am the third singer please this will be like the end of my bhajan career if today you get up before my bhajan i don't know when again will i sing in front of you swami please don't do this to me and of course then the third finger never went up the two bhajans continued and it was about a month later this about 20 25 days later and swami was sitting outside and the signal for aarti was when swami would stretch out his hand to hold the brass railing and would you know get up and that would be the sign the sign for the aarti to be taken and even as the third second bhajan was getting over and i had never prayed probably the first time i prayed was when i was seated as a little boy you know bhagwan how could you do this to me and the next time was i was very very strongly broadcasting my prayer swami please swami please swami please and as i was crying out like this to bhagwan second bhajan gets over swami stretches out his arm his right arm to hold the brass railing and even as the pujari sir lights the aarti with the left hand swami says let us have one more bhajan inkokati bhajan inkokka bhajan swami said and that day i sang this very same bhajan allah ho akbar allah ho akbar allah ho akbar you know what is the meaning of allah ho akbar allah you are great and that day i meant every word of what i was saying swami you are great allah you are great and bhagwan stood for the entire bhajan okay and with the beautiful the gestures that only the lord can do this beautiful waving of the arms okay stood for my entire bhajan and after the bhajan he looked at the pujari and said now let us have aarti that was the day when he told me that for the sake of teaching us a lesson swami can even take a pain upon himself it was a time when bhagwan was suffering was having a little bit of pain in his fractured hip in spite of that swami had stood for the entire bhajan just to let me know that he had heard my prayers and the lesson that i was supposed to learn better not have ego otherwise he goes when you have ego he goes that is how swami puts the samskaras into our heart but it does not even end over here there are several such examples of how swami through very very minute words through one gesture one smile he will convey to us the ultimate and he will leave a lasting impact in our hearts but this has to get translated into action and that is the third kar that we are talking about first is chamatkar second is samskar the third is paropakar this has to get translated into action into something that will benefit the entire mankind the entire community the society in which we exist and here i am narrate, going to narrate this experience that happened during gram seva the gram seva as we know it began in 2001 2000 i joined in 2003 and for the first few years i enjoyed doing gram seva but even as i became a little senior and i started taking over started doing a bit of organizing work i started feeling that this gram seva was not adding any value to me because what would happen is we would go for gram seva and my job would be to see to walk up to a house 
and then ask yanta mandi unnaru how many people are there and in a little hut the lady will say padaidu mandi unnaru there are 15 people in that hut and my first reaction will be appaddam cheppadamma don't tell lies i am supposed to be seeing narayana in that lady but i will tell my narayana don't speak lies and then i will do an investigating work i will walk into the house i will see how many people can actually say i will come out and decide my own estimate that only seven people can stay in this house and this is what used to happen and then my narayana will shout at me scream at me i will shout back i used to fight back and at the end of the day i used to be left frustrated and even as i sit in kulvant hall at the end of the one of, of the days of gram seva i used to feel frustrated i used to think swami what is this happening i am supposed to be go- going and serving and here i am coming back frustrated it is a lose lose situation because the villagers that i have served are not happy because i have fought with them i am not happy because they have not got what they wanted and i have thought that you know they have cheated and this kept happening for an entire gram the 10 days of gram seva i was thoroughly frustrated to a point that i was even disgusted and i said i don't want to do this gram seva and so the next year i took a slip from gram seva the convocation drama was around and so i told our sir that i'm going to be busy in gra- in convocation drama and that i don't want to participate i won't be able to participate in the gram seva and so i was given off actually the main reason was i was just not enjoying gram seva and during that those 10 days i used to talk to a few students who used to come back from gram seva how was your day and they used to say oh brother fantastic it was and i used to wonder what is it that that brother is able to experience and i am not able to experience that brother is telling me that his day was fantastic i was not able to feel anything fantastic about my gram seva what was going wrong and so the next year i decided swami come what may i am going to try and experience what those brothers are able to experience and so i decided that i wanted to be a part of the gram seva the next year but i said i don't want to go to the village we have something called a stock vehicle the stock vehicle does not actually go to the village it is planted on the main road and its job is to replenish the stock in the various vehicles that go towards the villages and so we really don't have to serve we will merely serve the people who are serving the students who are serving and at the end of the gram seva day whatever extra stock is left will be come and put back into into the uh, stock vehicle and as we return back to puttaparthi we will distribute all the extra food packets to all the people on the way so that was our job so i was in the stock vehicle we were coming back somewhere near kotticheru we stopped and we were distributing all these packets and suddenly you know i find somebody pulling my pant it was an old beggar so to say an old very very ragged person was pulling my pant and obviously you know the first thing is no dhoti no sari no go 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 because that is what you know we thought that is that what they wanted and so he said no 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 i don't want i don't want sari dhoti naaku adi vaddu then i say yem kavali what do you want you have got prasadam kada have you got prasadam yes i have got prasadam then what do you want he says he just wants to speak to me <clears throat> speak to me about what so i got down from the vehicle and he took me to a side and then he says i don't want sari or dhoti he held my hand and said i just want to tell you that i am a beggar who begs every single day of the year to get his daily bread but during these 10 days of gram seva i don't have to beg because i know that my swami is sending food for me i don't have to stretch out my hands in front of any anybody else my lord is stretching out his hands and coming all the way to my doorstep to give me prasadam and when i see that smile on your face and when you say swami pampincharu this prasadam for you me kosam this prasadam has been sent you give me that pride you give me that dignity of life and for allowing me to keep my head held high for these 10 days i am deeply grateful to you and to bhagwan that is what gram seva does to us 
that is what gram seva did to me i was able to see an entire metamorphosis happening in the way i was looking at all these individuals for them it was swami stretching out his hand and giving them a hope a reason to live it is not just a packet of food but it is the grace of the lord with hope inside giving dignity and respect to every single individual that is what is paropakar i am reminded of several such beautiful experiences of how swami has shown how to do that service we all know the story of that buffalo when bhagwan used to go to horsley hills which is close to puttaparthi on one occasion when swami had gone to horsley hills there was a buffalo that used to pick up the hot water the particular guest house is on top of a hill and every day a buffalo used to pick up hot water from down the hill and take it up to the hill for all the guests and bhagwan who were staying in that guest house swami had spent a few days there and at the end of his stay over there as everybody got into the bus into the car to leave and bhagwan also had just got into the car suddenly swami said oh no i have forgotten one thing swami got down ran behind and went up and there was one devotee who followed bhagwan to see what he was doing swami went up to the buffalo and said you have done fantastic seva and he was patting that buffalo imagine what that buffalo what a day for that buffalo swami used to call us swami calls us dunno puta let us be that kind of a buffalo which can serve bhagwan and then get a pat on our backs swami showed his gratitude even to that buffalo and it it seems it did not end over there swami got a photograph of him standing with the buffalo and the owner clicked so much so that next year when he went to horsley hills he actually gave that photograph to the owner saying this is what we clicked last year that is how swami remembered the services of that insignificant so called insignificant buffalo that is how we have to serve and that is how we have to pay gratitude i am reminded of another experience a uh, incident which happened it was after the anantpur water project when all the devotees from anantpur had come to show their gratitude to bhagwan and when they all said swami thank you so much for doing such mammoth task of giving us water swami's reply was thank thanks to you thank you for giving me this opportunity to serve you somebody asked bhagwan swami you are doing such a fantastic job of giving water health and education free of cost swami said i am not doing anything great these things are supposed to be given free of cost i am doing what is supposed to be done that is how service has to be done why is swami able to do that is because for him there is nothing different from him there is nothing which is separate from him the entire world exists in him he exists in the entire world he is able to find oneness with everything and then swami is telling us the ultimate that even i am you and you are me and can we also do this we also can expand our horizons we also can expand our heart to assimilate and include everybody into our life that is when our true parupkar will happen and in fact that kind of a parupkar will lead us to the fourth kar which is called sakshatkar which is realizing realization so we went through this beautiful four stage process of chamatkar samskar parupkar and finally sakshatkar i am reminded of one experience that i have had <clears throat> it was in the year 2007 and often times all of us you, we sit with letters to be given to bhagwan i used to give only one letter to bhagwan in the whole year and that was on my birthday because that is the only occasion where i can legitimately walk up to bhagwan swami will bless me and then he will take the letter i am sure each one of us have experienced that and so i was also sitting on my on my birthday with a letter 
and Swami did not take my letter, which was a very common thing also. And generally what I used to do is, if Swami does not take my letter that day, I will simply tear it and throw it off because I know that the contents of the letter have already reached Bhagwan. Because whatever is there in the letter, Swami already knows. There is no need to give a letter. And if Swami wouldn't take, so be it. So that day, I, was, I had come back to hostel and I was about to, I was changing and I was about to you know, get rid of this letter when somebody said that Sainath sir was giving a Parayanam, was telling us stories about Bhagwan, just like we are now hearing. And so I ran for that Parayanam session and Sainath sir out of all the days on that day was talking about a very interesting episode that happened. See how Bhagwan organizes this entire thing. He was talking about a very interesting debate that all the students had many, many years ago. The debate was whether we should write letters to Swami or not. One set of boys were saying there is no need to write letters to Bhagwan because Swami knows everything. And the other party was saying we should write letters to Bhagwan. Okay, because that is our chance to go close to him. So this was a debate that happened and obviously there was no direct conclusion to this debate. All the boys slept that evening. Next day morning, Swami was inside the interview room. Swami sent word for Sainath sir. Sainath sir entered into the interview room and he noticed that there was a big pile of letters on Swami's left hand side. Swami was picking a letter and throwing it into the dustbin. Picking up another letter, throwing it into the dustbin and then picking up yet another letter, opening it up, and it was happening in a very random fashion. So this was a shocking experience for Sainath sir. He says, he was looking at this entire thing, exercise, and saying, what is this in his mind? What is this happening? Swami is simply throwing away letters without even reading them. All those devotees with so much of joy, they have written letters to him, and he's simply throwing them. And even as this thought was crossing his mind, Swami looked at Sainath sir and said, what are you thinking? Okay, he said, no Swami, nothing. And then Swami said, you are thinking why I am doing this. And Swami said, come here. And you know, you know, Bhagwan's very unpredictable. Sometimes he will call and he will hit you. <laughs> so he said, no Swami, I am very comfortable where I am standing. So no, no, Swami said, come here, come here and pick up one letter from here, from this pile. So he went, picked up a letter. Swami said, open it and read it at the back of the room. Go and read it to yourself. And so he opened the letter and it was a letter from a Bengali gentleman who had, was telling Swami that he had come six months back and he had a problem, one of his child was not well and he had prayed to Bhagwan and had received Bhagwan's prasadam and that prasadam had cured that child and this was a letter of gratitude to Bhagwan was the content of the letter. And as he finished the letter, he looked at Bhagwan and Swami looked at him and says, Kya bolta hai, that Bengali gentleman, kya bolta hai? That he came here six months back and his child was not well. And Swami gave him prasadam and now his child is very well. And so he is very happy and so he is thanking Bhagwan. Swami read out the entire contents of that letter. Obviously, the omniscient Lord knows everything. This is where suddenly Sainath sir re recollected the previous night's uh, discussion and he said, Swami, then is it necessary to write a letter to you? You anyway know everything. Is there any necessity, necessity to write a letter to you? And then Swami said a very beautiful thing. Swami said, see, remember, it is in response to your prayers that I came, I took up this form. I came down on earth is in response to your prayers. Each one of us have prayed for God knows how many janmas that the Lord comes down in physical form. And now that Swami has come in physical form, we suddenly say, He is omniscient, He is omnipresent, He is omnipotent. Isn't it funny? The same Lord, when He was not in physical form, we could have thought, isn't it, that He is omnipresent, He is omniscient. When the, when the Lord takes a form and comes, suddenly we discover His omnipresence, His omniscience and His omnipotence and says, there is no need to write a letter to Bhagwan because Bhagwan knows everything. Swami said, you jolly well should write a letter to me because it is in your answer to your prayers I have come. Now it is your duty to take that effort to come up to me because your redemption lies in being close to me. 
I have taken that hundred steps towards you. You have to take that one step towards me, and that is of writing a letter. Because in the process of writing a letter, we are actually achieving trikarana shuddhi. When we are writing our feelings to Bhagwan, we are thinking of Bhagwan, we are speaking out those words, and we are writing. At that moment, there is unity and purity in our thought, word, and deed, and therefore we must write a letter to Bhagwan. This was what I heard on that evening. I said, "Yes, I am not going to tear that letter. I am going to sit with that letter because this is my opportunity to come close to Bhagwan." Of course, it was another kind of tapas because it was four months before I finally gave that letter to Bhagwan. Every day I used to sit with that letter, so much so that finally that whole piece of paper got completely, um, you know, was soiled in my sweat <laughs> of my palms. All the ink was had melted away had dissolved and i had to write two new letters and it was on march 13 2008 when swami was sitting in bhajan hall and swami simply called i went and gave that letter to him i had nothing much to write in the letter i used to write this beautiful prayer that i had heard from my senior swami you be the thinker of my thoughts you be the doer of my deeds you be the speaker of my words So this is the prayer I used to write, and then this is something that Bhagwan had told: always pray, "I am you, and you are me." So this is the last line of my letter, Swami: "I am you, and you are me." And even as Bhagwan was reading that entire letter, he came up to that line, and then showed me those two lines, and he underlined with that with his finger. He said, "I am you, and you are me." This feeling, develop it in your heart. Idi bhadram ga pinch kundi, Swami said. Keep this as the mission statement for your life. That, the day I realize, the day we realize, that there is in fact no difference between us and him, that I am he and he is me. That is the day of sakshatkar. In fact. dear brothers and sisters it is so ironic that when swami stands and speaks and thunders and says i am god all of us thunder back saying yes swami we know and we all clap and then when swami says now i am telling you your god is telling you that you are god there is pin drop silence and we look back and swami say <laughs> swami how can that be how can we be god it is our same very lord which is telling us who is telling us i am you and you are me why are we not able to develop that swami once only he can play with these words swami said you pretend to be god you will tend to be god you will end being god you pretend to be god you will tend to be god you will end up being god that is our destiny that is our ultimate stage we have to do it we can do it we must do it we should do it that is the gratitude that we can show to bhagwan for that very reason the lord comes down on earth to take us through this four stages of chamatkar samskar paropakar and ultimately sakshatkar so with that prayer in our hearts and in our minds that there is nothing which can stop us from realizing that he is in us he is within us outside of us in fact he is the one that pervades the entire cosmos and in fact he is us and that we are him i take this opportunity to thank bhagwan for giving me these precious moments to think about him and to immerse myself in him Namaste